Machinima is the use of real-time computer graphics engines to create a cinematic production. Most often video games are used to generate the computer animation. Machinima offers to provide an archive of gaming performance and access to the look and feel of software and hardware that may already have become unavailable or even obsolete for game studies. Machinima's gestures grant access to gaming's historical conditions of possibility and how Machinima offers links to a comparative horizon that informs, changes, and fully participates in video game culture. The practice of using graphics engines from video games arose from the animated software introductions of the 1980s Demoscene. Disney Interactive Studios 1992 video game Stunt Island and 1990s recordings of gameplay in first-person shooter video games, such as its software's Doom and Quake. Originally, these recordings documented speedruns, attempts to complete a level as quickly as possible, and multiplayer matches. The addition of storylines to these films created Quake movies. The more general term machinima, a portmanteau of machine cinema, arose when the concept spread beyond the Quake series to other games and software. After this generalization, machinima appeared in mainstream media, including television series and advertisements. Machinima has advantages and disadvantages when compared to other styles of filmmaking. Its relative simplicity over traditional frame-based animation limits control and range of expression. Its real-time nature favors speed, cost-saving, and flexibility over the higher quality of pre-rendered computer animation. Virtual acting is less expensive, dangerous, and physically restricted than live action. Machinima can be filmed by relying on in-game artificial intelligence or by controlling characters and cameras through digital puppetry. Scenes can be precisely scripted, and can be manipulated during post-production using video editing techniques. Editing, custom software, and creative cinematography may address technical limitations. Game companies have provided software for and have encouraged machinima, but the widespread use of digital assets from copyrighted games has resulted in complex, unresolved legal issues. Machinima productions can remain close to their gaming roots and feature stunts or other portrayals of gameplay. Popular genres include dance videos, comedy, and drama. Alternatively, some filmmakers attempt to stretch the boundaries of the rendering engines or to mask the original 3D context. The Academy of Machinima Arts and Sciences, a non-profit organization dedicated to promoting machinima, recognizes exemplary productions through Mackey Awards given at its annual Machinima Film Festival. Some general film festivals accept machinima, and game companies, such as Epic Games, Blizzard Entertainment and Jagex, have sponsored contests involving it. History Precedent 1980s software crackers added custom introductory credit sequences to programs whose copy protection they had removed. Increasing computing power allowed for more complex intros, and the demoscene formed when focus shifted to the intros instead of the cracks. The goal became to create the best 3D demos in real time with the least amount of software code. Disk storage was too slow for this, graphics had to be calculated on the fly and without a pre-existing game engine. In Disney Interactive Studios' 1992 computer game Stunt Island, users could stage, record, and play back stunts. As Nietzsche stated, the game's goal was not a high score but a spectacle, released the following year. Its software's doom included the ability to record gameplay as sequences of events that the game engine could later replay in real time. Because events and not video frames were saved, the resulting game demo files were small and easily shared among players. 
a culture of recording gameplay developed, as Henry Lowood of Stanford University called it, a context for spectatorship. The result was nothing less than a metamorphosis of the player into a performer. Another important feature of Doom was that it allowed players to create their own modifications, maps, and software for the game, thus expanding the concept of game authorship. In Machinimas, there is a dual register of gestures. The trained motions of the player determine the in-game images of expressive motion. Doom's 1996 successor, Quake, offered new opportunities for both gameplay and customization, while retaining the ability to record demos. Multiplayer games became popular, almost a sport. Demos of matches between teams of players were recorded and studied. Paul Marino, executive director of the AMAS, stated that death matches, a type of multiplayer game, became more cinematic. At this point, however, they still documented gameplay without a narrative. Quake Movies on October 26, 1996, a well-known gaming clan, the Rangers, surprised the Quake community with Diary of a Camper the first widely known machinima film, an example of transformative or emergent gameplay. This shift from competition to theatre required both expertise in and subversion of the game's mechanics. The Ranger demo emphasized this transformation by retaining specific gameplay references in its story. Diary of a Camper inspired many other Quake movies, as these films were then called. A community of game modifiers, artists, expert players, and film fans began to form around them. The works were distributed and reviewed on websites such as the Cineplex, Sykes Popcorn Jungle, and the Quake Movie Library. Production was supported by dedicated demo processing software such as Uwe Gerlisch's Little Movie Processing Center and David Court, writes non-linear editor Key Grip, the latter became known as Adobe Premiere for Quake demo files. Among the notable films were Clan Phantasm's Devil's Covenant, the first feature-length Quake movie, Avatar and Wendigo's Blabolicious which the QML awarded seven Quake Movie Oscars, and Clan Undead's Operation Bayshield, which introduced simulated lip synchronization and featured customized digital assets. Released in December 1997, its software's Quake 2 improved support for user-created 3D models. However, without compatible editing software, Filmmakers continued to create works based on the original Quake. These included the Ill Clan's Apartment Hunting and the Quake Done Quick groups. Scourge Done Slick. Quake 2 demo editors became available in 1998, in particular, Key Grip 2.0 introduced recamming, the ability to adjust camera locations after recording. Paul Marino called the addition of this feature a defining moment for M. Ashinema. With Quake 2 filming now feasible, Strange Company's 1999 production Eskerton, Nightfall was the first work to feature entirely custom-made character models. The December 1999 release of its Quake 3 Arena posed a problem to the Quake movie community. The game's demo file included information needed for computer networking, however, to prevent cheating, it warned of legal action for dissemination of the file format. Thus, it was impractical to enhance software to work with Quake 3. Concurrently, the novelty of Quake movies was waning. New productions appeared less frequently, and, according to Moreno, the community needed to reinvent itself to offset this development. Borg War, a 90-minute animated Star Trek fan film, was produced using Elite Force 2 and Starfleet Command 3, repurposing the game's voiceover clips to create a new plot. Borg War was nominated for two Mackie Awards by the Academy of Machinima Arts and Sciences. An August 2007 screening at a Star Trek convention in Las Vegas was the first time that CBS Paramount had approved the screening of a non-parody fan film at a licensed convention. 
generalization in January 2000, Hugh Hancock, the founder of Strange Company, launched a new website, Mashinima.com. The new name surprised the community, a misspelled contraction of machine cinema. The term Mashinima was intended to dissociate in-game filming from a specific engine. The misspelling stuck because it also referenced anime. The new site featured tutorials, interviews, articles, and the exclusive release of Triton Films' Quad God. The first film made with Quake 3 Arena, Quad God was also the first to be distributed as recorded video frames, not game-specific instructions. This change was initially controversial among Mashinima producers who preferred the smaller size of demo files. However, demo files required a copy of the game to view. The more accessible traditional video format broadened Quad God's viewership, and the work was distributed on CDs bundled with magazines. Thus, its decision to protect Quake 3's code inadvertently caused Machinima creators to use more general solutions and thus widen their audience. Within a few years, Machinima films were almost exclusively distributed in common video file formats. Machinima began to receive mainstream notice. Roger Ebert discussed it in a June 2000 article and praised Strange Company's Machinima setting of Percy Bysshe Shelley's sonnet, Ozzy Mandiers, at Showtime Network's 2001 Alternative Media Festival. The Il Clan's 2000 Machinima film Hardly Workin' won the Best Experimental and Best in Show awards. Steven Spielberg used Unreal Tournament to test special effects while working on his 2001 film Artificial Intelligence AI. Eventually, interest spread to game developers. In July 2001, Epic Games announced that its upcoming game Unreal Tournament 2003 would include Matinee, a Machinima production software utility. As involvement increased, filmmakers released fewer new productions to focus on quality. At the March 2002 Game Developers Conference, five machinima makers, Anthony Bailey, Hugh Hancock, Catherine Anna Kang, Paul Marino, and Matthew Ross, founded the AMAS, a non-profit organization dedicated to promoting machinima. At Quaken in August, the new organization held the first machinima film festival, which received mainstream media coverage. In Acronox, the movie, by Jake Hughes and Tom Hall, won three awards, including Best Picture. The next year, In the Waiting Line, directed by Tommy Pilotta and animated by Randy Cole, utilizing Fountainhead Entertainment's machine animation tools, it became the first Machinima music video to air on MTV. As graphics technology improved, Machinima filmmakers used other video games and consumer-grade video editing software. Using Bungie's 2001 game Halo, Combat Evolved, Rooster Teeth Productions created a popular comedy series Red vs. Blue, The Blood Gulch Chronicles. The series' second season premiered at the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts in 2004. Mainstream appearances Machinima has appeared on television, starting with G4's series Portal. In the BBC series Time Commanders, players reenacted historic battles using Creative Assembly's real-time game Rome. Total War, MTV2's Video Mods recreates music videos using characters from video games such as The Sims 2, Blood Rain, and Tribes. Blizzard Entertainment helped to set part of Make Love Not Warcraft, an Emmy Award-winning 2006 episode of the comedy series South Park. In its massively multiplayer online role-playing game World of Warcraft, by purchasing broadcast rights to Douglas Gayerton's Machinima documentary Molotov Alva and his search for the creator in September 2007, HBO became the first television network to buy a work created completely in a virtual world. In December 2008, Machinima.com signed 15 experienced television comedy writers, including Patrick Veroni, Bill Oakley, and Mike Rowe, to produce episodes for the site. Commercial use of Machinima has increased. Rooster Teeth sells DVDs of their Red vs. 
Volvo Cars sponsored the creation of a 2004 advertisement game on the first film to combine machinima and live action. Later, Electronic Arts commissioned Rooster Teeth to promote the Madden NFL 07 video game. Blockhouse TV uses MovieStorm's Machinima software to produce its preschool educational DVD series Jack and Holly Game developers have continued to increase support for Machinima. Products such as Lionhead Studios' 2005 business simulation game The Movies, Linden Research's Virtual World Second Life, and Bungie's 2007 first-person shooter Halo 3 encourage the creation of user content by including machinima software tools. Using the movies, Alex Chan, a French resident with no previous filmmaking experience, took four days to create The French Democracy, a short political film about the 2005 civil unrest in France. Third-party mods like Gary's Mod usually offer the ability to manipulate characters and take advantage of custom or migrated content allowing for the creation of works like Counter-Strike for kids that can be filmed using multiple games. In a 2010 interview with PC Magazine, Valve CEO and co-founder Gabe Newell said that they wanted to make a Half-Life feature film themselves, rather than hand it off to a big-name director like Sam Raimi and that their recent team Fortress 2, Meet the Team, Machinima Shorts were experiments in doing just that. Two years later, Valve released their proprietary non-linear Machinima software, Source Filmmaker.